quarter camera off. That's worse. Turn this down because this is awfully loud. Okay, so well, if you didn't see by that little bit of a teaser there, bang. We're playing the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe version. We've already played the normal Stanley Parable. Um, and I think we did everything we can possibly do, including the baby ending. So I'm going to do everything I possibly can do on the deluxe version except for the baby uh ending that's the one exception i'm not doing that ending it wasted four hours it wasted more than four hours of my life it wasted like eight hours ten hours of my life because of failures on it so i'm not doing that i will do everything else though my first port of call is doing achievement hunting so i mean i guess let's just pull up the game and get into it And if you're not following, as as that said, follow and subscribe. Please choose a screen or subtitles. Ah, here we go. We want English as our subtitles. Confirm. Have you played? Yes, I have. But do we want to do yes? Or do we want to do no for the intro? We're going to say no. I want it to be from the beginning as if I've never played before. No. Until the computer is barely visible. So it wants it like that. Okay. I'll do it there. I'll do it there. I don't want it too dark. Please enter the current time. Oh my god. Okay, so if we change it to 5. Like 5.40? 5.39? I'll wait till it's 5.40. Well, no, we won't. It's just 5.39. Okay, thank you for letting me know. We're doing achievements. Settings. Audio. Field of view. You know what? We'll keep it there. We'll keep it there. It is what it is. Video. Keep it on borderless. Controls. There's a jump. Simplified controls. Oh, oh, oh. Auto walk, crouch. I can crouch on this? Interact. Alright, let's begin the game. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. What do you have in store for me today? This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Oh, what a employee tough job to fill. Employee job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came and he does a fantastic a job of doing it. Telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them. And in what order? This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. How long was he and there for? Others might have considered it soul-ending. Stanley relished every moment that... Because he probably gets paid a bag for it. Come on. He's in his bag doing this job. And Stanley was happy. 
I'd be happy to if I was doing that and getting paid millions. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Oh. Something that would forever change Stanley. What happened, Stanley? Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him. No one's telling him to press Q. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Very Shocked, clear, yeah. Frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and oh, stepped hello. out of his office. I hate Mondays. So do I. So do I. Don't we all hate Mondays? Providing partition for 56 years. Wow. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. You know what? I didn't decide to do that because I decided to do achievements instead, like this one. Like trying to jump because... No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace on. of his co-worker. Yeah, there we go. Oh my god, two achievements off the bat. Now there's one for this one. Oh, please. Are you I really am. just doing this for the achievement? Yes. Click the door five times. Is that all yes. that you think an achievement is worth? Yes, no. narrator. No, no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I okay. Say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. What's this? Mm. Yeah. I say I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort from I like being able to crouch. Perhaps 50 clicks will do. Let's see the yes, dust under here. Certainly. 50. All right, 50 clicks. Watch this. <gasps> blah, 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 blah. No, 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 I'm still not feeling it. I, I want this achievement hey, to have meant something. It has to be a, a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. Hustle, hustle. I want to see commitment. A yes. willingness to go all the way, no matter what all the cost. All the way. Why way. don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? 417, 417, 417. Oh, hello. Loading. Where's 417, 417? <laughs> Great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. 437, 437. Is it back over here? That one. Excellent. I think we're getting we? somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks 415, or so. 415, 415. 10 clicks or so. Where's 415? 417, 416. 10 clicks or so. Now, back to door number 437. We're getting back, we're getting back, we're getting back. Come on. We got this narrator. Me and you against the world. Me and you. Let's see. How about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine. Bang. Right, back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting I'm somewhere. I'm feeling it too. I'm feeling it now. Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Because I am for sure. Okay. Now, now, now go climb on employee no, no, 419's no. deck. Get up, get up there. They won't let me. Yes, this yes. is great. You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. The hustle Don't and the bustle. Clicks on door four one. I know where this one is. Don't worry. Bang, we bang. Almost got it. Now the Bro, copy machine. High. Do that one again. Do it again. The copy machine. The copy machine. Who, who, who? Copy machine, copy machine, woo, woo, bang! Finish enough, Stanley, five clicks on door four, three, zero. Finish me off! Yes, we did it! Oh, wow. That <sighs> felt amazing. Oh, you really earned it, Stanley. That Nothing was amazing. Hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud no. of how far we've come today. Thank Just you. Think, only a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. And really? I still do. What were you thinking? Don't know. What are the other achievements? Let's pull up Steam. Go on to the Stanley Parable. The achievements. Complete the Stanley Parable. Quit the game and start again. I can do that. Watch this. Quit menu. Begin.
No, not that kind of quit. Do we need to quit to desktop? It's opening. Achievement? Come on. Come on, you got this. It is 5.47 now. Uh, hang on, I'm hanging on, hanging on. Before, you, can you just say something? Sure. Thank you for actually setting the clock both times you've booted up the game. No, you're welcome. A lot of people don't take that step seriously. They just leave the clock set at 12 and call it a day. But you're actually taking the time to set the clock, and I appreciate that. That's how I know you care about this experience. You're paying attention. I didn't even have any way of, of knowing if the times you're setting are correct. I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. Since you've been so cooperative, next time you boot up the game and just set the clock to your favorite time. Go ahead, pick whichever time you want, even if it's not the correct time. Oh, thank you, thank you. That's so sweet. I will be setting it to whatever time I want. I booted up the game for a second time, does it give me it? Yes, I did get it. What's the next one? What's the next one? Eight. I know how to do that one. I can, I can complete that. I don't know how to do that. Set all the sliders to all of it. Set all settings sliders in the menu to all the available numbers. Why? Why am I doing this? Why did I think this? Okay. How many settings sliders are there? Okay. Look, we're gonna do this. One, two. We're gonna go through like this. Let's get some noise in there. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Let's hear him get quiet. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley. Music, get down. This is nice elevator music. Does this count as setting them every single time? If I'm like getting it piece by piece? Bang, bang, bang. Oh, I can actually see the POV. FOV, sorry. Let's let's keep it at seventy two. Okay, and now this one. It was on eighty, so we'll keep that on eighty. I feel like eighty is a good place to have it. back did that not get me yet set all setting sliders in the menu to all available numbers what set all settings sliders in the menu to all available numbers what just go through every single slider and option within the settings and go through every single number. Oh, and option. Is it and option as well? No way this is and option. Settings. That. Bang. Let's get back to English. Yep. Oh my god, I can make those different sizes. Ah. This is why. 
How big can we make this dot? Is this like pixel? No, this isn't the amount of pixels. Wait, is this the amount of pixels? Like total pixels of the dot? I mean, we can keep going to presumably 500. Is 500 the max? We're gonna get there. That's why, because I couldn't get all the sliders without doing that. So I've got to do all the settings to get all the sliders. This is riveting gameplay. Riveting. Oh, it goes past 500. Right. Wow, that's a huge one. Okay. Now, the opacity. A hundred times this time. Can you have it completely transparent? Because that would defeat the purpose, right? Okay, well, you can. Defeats the purpose for sure. Let's get back to medium. No, what happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? Okay. Show label colors. Okay, show label colors. Yes! Yes, I did it. I did it. I did it. Hooray, yeah, we did it. This is an epic gamer move. So I can do that. I can do that. Test achievement description. Replace this. Okay. I can do that. Don't play for 10 years. And play for the entirety of a Tuesday. I don't know how I'm going to do the entirety of a Tuesday. Can I set my clock to fast forward time? Um, test achievement, please ignore. How do we get this? Once you've played through endings, you'll find a new door labeled new content open, allowing you to complete the new content ending, which allows you to explore a large expo hall during the ending sequel. While in the expo, you can find an exhibit for a lever that distributes achievements. Oh, that's not, that's not the end. It's time you start at the game, someone will ask you to set the time and eventually more settings and sliders. Once you've started up the game enough times, they will mention that they will leave, but we'll see you again sometime. Once you've done this and you've collected all six Stanley minifigure collectibles. What the heck? You can exit the main menu to see the epilogue ending. Once you reach... Oh my god. You can talk to the mysterious person through the computer and they'll want the game to continue and will also fix the achievement machine from this point onward you'll be able to keep accessing the new content door to revisit the expo simply return to the issue oh my god jesus um super go outside cheat Yeah, I've got, so I do have an idea for this, right? I'm going to quit to the main menu. I'm going to quit to desktop. I'm going to go here. No, I'm not. I'm going to go into my settings. I'm going to go into time. Set time. No, don't set it automatically. I'm going to change it to 2035. Change. Done. I'm going to exit out of that and I'm going to play. And hopefully this doesn't break anything. Yes. Thank you, Davey. I'm going to set it to 11. 11. Ah, 11.11, your favorite time of day. It's not, but hey. That's fine. Or could you simply not resist giving me the correct time again? 
After all, I know how much you enjoy setting the time correctly. Okay, now I'm curious how accurate 11, 11 p.m. is. Let's use another slider to find out. Okay. It's, it's relatively accurate. You know, can I say regardless of the accuracy of the clock, I'm having a great time adjusting these settings. Thank you. I feel like I'm learning more about you and how you like things to be set. It's good to collect data. I wish had, we had more sliders, but we've gone through all the sliders I have. Hmm, perhaps I can invent new sliders to gather some data on you. Shouldn't be too hard. Yep, let me whip a couple new ones up. Should be ready by the next time I boot up the game. Okay. Begin the game. Please give it to me. Please give it to me. Please give it to me. Please. This is the... Yes! We did it, baby! Now I can change my settings back. Settings. Time and language. Date and time. Bam. Set time automatically. That's done. Can I cheat the commitment one? I just want to know if I can cheat a little bit. Um... How to cheat commitment Stanley Parable Don't boot going to No 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 Not to game change the system to about that on a Tuesday. What? Oh, right. No, is there any other way? Is there any other way? <sighs> Regardless of the type of achievement, why would I just want to cheat it? Can I cheat it? I might have to do this off camera. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that one off camera. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, I'll do it. Why is my camera frozen? Hello? My, my camera is frozen. What happened? Properties. I messed it up. Why? So, evidently, um, bad idea to try changing your, um, time and all that while you're in the middle of streaming because it breaks your camera and your computer. So, won't be doing that again, I guess. Unless I got it. Then hey, then I got it maybe, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I know I need Steam open to watch these achievements.
What time is it? Does anyone really truly know? Of course they don't. Nobody knows anything. You and I don't even know each other. We're like strangers. Also, I do apologize, but there was an entire list of questions and sliders that were missed. Like I made dogs and cats friends and stuff like that. So my bad. Sure, I've adjusted all of the game settings to your exact specifications, but who hasn't? It's just like, it's it's just what I do, like a day job, and now the job is over. There's no information, there's no more information for me to gather. I've collected all the data that I can on you, and still, I really don't know, I, and I still don't really know you, and you don't know, no I don't. And neither of us know what time it is. It is 6.20. But if I'm being totally honest, the clock doesn't have anything to do, doesn't do anything in the game anyways. You won't have me in here when the game starts next time, but that's just okay. Video games were meant to be played alone. I don't like being alone, no. And maybe it's the only information I've really learned about you. Well, it's time for me to leave. There's still one more scene that we need to adjust, but it may take a little time before I'm ready for that. It's not really in my job description, but that's okay. Perhaps you'll see me again, if you can find me. Talk soon. Oh, I got it. I got commitment. <laughs> so, not many more achievements left to go. We're gonna beat it in four minutes and 22 seconds. We're gonna do this. But what I need to do All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? A speed run this shit. The meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. To the point where I get into the office. But I'll do another achievement when I get in there. When Stanley came to a left set door. Of two open gotcha. Doors, he entered the door yep. on his left. I did. Into the meeting room. Yeah, there was not Tips for not getting fired. Thank you. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Room Stanley closet. decided wow. to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a okay. staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I did. Hello, Mr. Secretary. Hello, doors. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What's this? Shocked, unraveled. This is another Stanley one. Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark That's, is that, is that another one? From him? It he is. Could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk yes. guarded the terrible truth that his boss what had been from him. And so the boss had assigned it an, an extra secret pin number. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. I did know it though. Incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to Oh my god, a lock. Ah. ah. Amazing. It locks it down now. What the, the newly opened passageway. And that's fixed. Wow. This is cool. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was oh. a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? I'm this not sure. This question would not go unanswered for long. It wouldn't go? Okay. That's fine, that's fine. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large Escape. door that read Mind Control Facility. Yep, on it. This is dark, dark, man. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? I've got all the strength in the world. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the uh, number of an employee in the two, no, four, The lives of so four, two, many seven? individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where Where's four two seven? Four two seven. 
Me, right there. Oh my god, that actually is my office. That's crazy, that's crazy. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his Why is that an employee? That his emotions had been manipulated oh. to accept it blindly? Up we go. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. It was Employee pirate. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Blinded by the light. Oh. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls the labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. And I didn't care about eating, any of that. Working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machine. Dubai, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. I'm not doing it. Blackness and a Blackness. rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. Bang. He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly oh. opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? I don't how care. How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For no. it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not yeah, been to penis. understand, but to let go. Oh, please no me. longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Boom. Stanley felt the Another achievement upon done. His skin, Completed the game. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly Can the I way, skip it? No. Right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Aww, how cute. Yeah, complete this complete the game. I've got one more achievement left. I've just gotta do this. Nope. I've gotta get closer. No. Nope. This was my issue last time. This is what took the longest, having to restart until I get in an ideal position. And then I can power through. More power. Nope. Maybe? Nope. I just gotta make sure I'm going straight away. Because I want to be in this place. That's exactly where I want to be. Yes, when just go, Stanley go, go. When came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Cutting corners, cutting corners, cutting corners. Yet there was That's not the a single way, I think. person here either. Feeling a wave Boom. of disbelief. Stanley decided to go up to his boss. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Yep, super fast, super fast, super fast. Is that open? No. Stepping into his manager's office, no. Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. 
Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let yes, the narrator talk. Yes, no, I talk. didn't. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. I relaxed with a chalky biscuit. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. And then we start again. This is how we do it. That's got to be done. Okay, this is taking too long. How many times do I have to do this? Uh, get me in the hallway. Hallway. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go oh, to that's the not meeting. what I wanted, but it'll Stanley do. Stanley came to a set of two open doors. Always faster, door but that, that, that'll work. Come on. Yet there Let's go this way now. single person here either. Feeling a wave Bang. of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. Coming to a staircase, yes, 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 yes. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay. Is it open? God. Damn it. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah blah blah. Dark secrets, the keypad, Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh hey, look, it's a new passage. Yep, yep. Kill Supreme. Okay, let's let's try it, let's try it, let's try it. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Mm -hmm. Just go straight. That's all that matters. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. I don't know. Did he have the strength to find out? No, I don't have the strength to find out. But I will press this button. Now the monitors jump to life. They're pirate. What's on pirate? Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Oh, boring. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Okay, this is coming down. This mind control facility. It was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was Zoink. this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused Could it be actually like a boring he job? Couldn't accept it. His like his boring holes? In someone else's control? Never. That'd be, a, that'd be it funny. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world go 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 but here was the proof the heart of the operation but here was the controls proof. labeled with emotions happy or sad oh one four content two walking is that the employee eating, number working all of it monitored and commanded from this i'm place. clicking already i'm clicking already as the cold reality of his past began to sink in stanley decided please come on come on Blackness and Come a on. rising quick, chill quick, quick, of quick, uncertainty. Quick. Was it over? Yes, yes. He had won. 
he had defeated the machine. Unshackled myself. So from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. Ooh, there's light. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine? I'm not house? sure. What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered. I'm to doing this to entertain Paul myself while I'm trying to go through here. Come on. That he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was it will be mine. Did. No one else's. It was you can't steal my life. The only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Come on. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. Even the with of the longer time. The immense possibility of the new path. Jesus. This was exactly that. the way is right every now, single achievement the in the Stanley Parable and all it took was Stanley my stream dying twice my computer crashing hopefully I didn't lose footage otherwise it's been a fucking rip and I did have to cheat two of the achievements I'm sorry Just eating this chalky biscuit real quick. We are going to watch something because I think I'm having dinner fairly soon and I don't want to be playing the game while I'm having dinner. So let's watch some, um, I did a thing. How you going? This is my pool. It's a nice pool. And this is a frog. It's not meant to look like this. It's dead. And this is an Eastern water skin known for their love of water also dead and no I'm not murdering them they just keep drowning themselves and I have no idea why so today I'm gonna make a little robot lifeguard to save them okay first I need to figure out why they keep drowning and I think it's because the pool has these slippery tiles on the side so when the striped marsh frogs and water skinks jump in and then try to get out they can't grip they their can't slippery fingers out. on the edge so they get tired and drown unlike this guy that's really the sad. tree frog that I'll often see doing leisure laps in my pool and they never seem to get stuck as they have these suction cups on their soggy feet. <laughs> but I reckon it's still good to get them out quickly as the chlorine can't be good for their skin. Oh, dude, come on. Oi, mate, I'm trying to save you. Get him, um, get him. Or, alternatively, right? Come on. No. It wouldn't be worth a video, but a pool cover? So, the most practical solution would obviously be for the frogs and lizards to use today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. I've been loving Jonathan Van Ness's great class on self-care, who taught me how to invest in myself, find joy in life, and reach enlightenment. And now, I can finally float on water. If only the <laughs> other lizards and frogs What the heck? Had learned oh. this. Do you have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography and illustration. Good old Skillshare. Illustration, to graphic design, freelancing, and more. You can find classes that will match your goals and interests. So check out the link below. While we watch this. 
And why is Chrome so buggy? And make the other frogs and lizards little suction cup shoes so they can also oh, climb up the slippery tiles. But they didn't want to cooperate. They don't want the crocs. Then there's my third option. And the simplest, to just make a ramp ladder thing that floats on the water so they can climb out. But there's a problem with this. These pool pavers are hot really hot so hot that i was able to cook a kangaroo steak on them but unlike julienne oh. over there so what the, the last frogs thing i would want cook? is for a wet tired frog to crawl out onto these hot tiles and get uh. roasted and then there's the feral cats in my yard which i have seen waiting in these bushes for food and there is nothing they love more than a fried frog a but i think i can get past both of these problems by making a flipping device that shoots the frog or lizard out of my pool into the safety of these bushes and i reckon an easy place to start is with something what, an easy place to start would be with this actually it usually harms animals a mouse trap if i just cut these things off here and put them here then bend a metal flap yes. and put it here i now have a reverse what? mouse trap and instead of smushing what? the animals when triggered it now flings them away oh yeah why so i tested it on this frog i don't know why Whee! and it works pretty well but I wasn't sure if real animals yeah, would actually trigger YouTube. it. So I left it out at night with some food on top to see what would happen. I've resorted to eating chocolate. I've resorted to eating chocolate biscuits. I'm hungry. No, get a, get a pair of scissors. I can't open it if you can't. Silly. Wait, so why do you want to know what we were doing for the weekend? Why do you want to know what we were doing on the weekend? Mum wants to know if I mumble, 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 mumble. I want to go to New York. Oh. Um. You want to have plans for this? Huh? No, not that I remember. Going to town Saturday. Oh, if make up an excuse. I have tuna in my eyes. And at night, this hungry guy showed up. Hey, is it gonna fling the cat? Bang! And I'm not sure if it was the camera's frame rate or the strength of the catapult, but the cat seemed to disappear. So it's definitely strong enough for the frogs. But I'm beginning to realize Hopefully it didn't kill this the device cat. only works once and then I have to reload it. So unless I have hundreds of these floating in the pool, which Big would issue. make swimming quite difficult, it's not really gonna work. And also if the frog I should probably change this to... Hold on, sorry. Sorry. I got stuff to change. There we go. Frog climbs into this bit and not on top. They'll just get squished. So I need to come up with something that auto loads and is safer. And I think I've got a good option right here. My pool cleaner's exhaust, which is extremely strong. Uh, okay, Jesus Christ. So all I need to do is create a little switch thing that turns on the water when the frogs or lizards are in a certain spot, squirting them out of my pool which means I need to figure out how to detect a frog. Like, but lucky for like me, a, they are like always a water wet. So I think are I can use this moisture wet? sensor and this box of random plumbing I found on the side of the road. Or frogs like sometimes wet. <coughs> Mostly wet, I guess. Boo. And after fiddling around with the nice. pipes, glue and heat gun, 
I created this, which plugs what? into the high pressure outlet directing the water up to this ball valve. Then once a frog climbs on top of this grippy pyramid, it triggers the sensor, turning on the valve, making the water shoot out from underneath the frog, launching them safely into outer space. And this sensor is controlled by this Arduino, which is inside this container to keep it dry. But just to make nice. sure it's 100% waterproof, I also used your mum's nail polish to paint all the electronics, which will stop it short circuiting. I'll see you Does that work? Sexy. See ya, honey. Okay, let's go <laughs> test it out. So I attached it to the wall which was way harder than it should have been, as I kind of forgot that the attachment was underwater, meaning it was really hard to screw on. And then the box I made doesn't seem to be waterproof. So then I tested it first with my wet finger, which successfully triggered and turned the ball valve. Nice. Now for a test with the soggy lizard and the water turned on. You gotta kill some frogs. And it does trigger the sensor, but besides that is horrible. It doesn't want to stay upright and dunks the electronics in the water and then only manages to shoot the lizard a foot in the air and not in the direction I want, which is very disappointing. But at least I finally have a poolside bidet like I've always <laughs> wanted. <laughs> Okay, new plan. I ditch the water propulsion <laughs> idea and make a super strong automatic reloading catapult that this floats on the surface for. of the pool and flings 10 frogs a second over the neighbor's fence. So I just banged a bunch of wood together, stole some code, borrowed a family spoon, attached some servos, some pool noodles, and finally attached some elastic. And now I've got this, a moisture... Are any of these the most efficient way to get frogs out of your pool? Like the, I mean the the water one could have worked. If if he made a contraption so that it was facing that way, they're straight up. If it was facing that way instead, the water one could have like boosted a little bit off onto the onto the edge. But like, I feel like all of these are just sensing automatic catapult, but that's which just floats what he on does, the surface right? of the water using these pool noodles, which I also he just, he just does things that are dangerous wrapped to make extra slippery meaning the only place the frogs can climb up is the arm and when they do it triggers the sensor which stretches the elastic and then fires and then automatically reloads into position for another frog or lizard to climb on top ah. of. not too weak and at first i tried powering it using an exercise band which worked but was not very powerful so then I, I like tried some hand spear rubber, and my little servo motor wasn't strong enough to tension it. But then I realized I could help it out by stacking elastic bands on the other side. And now... Test with support elastic. Come on. Yes! You're gonna kill a frog. Come on. You're gonna kill it. You're gonna kill it. Oh my god. Beautiful. That was so much better. It works well and is the perfect distance, but I still want to make it to cover all the So I put on another spear rubber and more elastic bands and... <laughs> I don't know if you would survive that. So no. I went back to one spear rubber Thank you. Thank and took you. it down to my pool for a real test. Not with the outlet. I know this is a joke, because he would die. <laughs> and that's how I did a thing, stopped uploading videos. That's what happened. Making a pool floaty for it. Ah.
Please tell me you can get out. Tell me you can get out. Ah? Uh, frog? You're out? <laughs> so close. Come on. Get out of here. <laughs> Thank nice. you so much for watching. If you like that, subscribe. I feel like there's so much money wasted, man. So much. What the heck is this? Why is this at hand? Makes me a little nervous. What do you think? You'll be fine. Huh? No. Only if there's a video showing what could happen if a joint or accident goes bad. I think we'll be fine. The reason I was so needlessly doing that sketchy operation on the jointer is to get this perfect fit on the complementary piece for the console table. And anytime I do any dangerous acts on a YouTube video here, I always worry that some. Right. Okay. What do we want to watch? The weirdest Dr. Phil guest ever? We want to watch. Ludwig votes for streamer of the year. Do we, do we want to watch how how did Tesla trick us? You can say whatever you want on the internet, and even if it isn't true, some people will believe it. That's why, as a six foot six, two hundred and fifty pound man, and capable of bench pressing twice my body weight, I feel the okay. need to call out nonsense when I see it. The latest example, yeah. Tesla showcased their Cybertruck towing a Porsche 911 while beating a Porsche 911 in a drag race. Now, when I first saw this, I thought, wow, this is a wow. genuinely clever This is a really fast Cybertruck. That's what I first thought when I saw it too. I was like, wow, how is this able to pull a, a car while going faster than the car that it's pulling? and well-executed marketing stunt. It showcases the potent acceleration of EVs that the world of combustion engines struggles to match. But then I heard rumors it didn't actually complete a quarter mile in the drag race. Instead, it only completed the eighth mile. This was easily verifiable watching the video, because you can see in the split view that when the Cybertruck crosses the finish line, it's only halfway to the timing boards, which mark the end of the quarter mile. Ooh. Now, when it comes to drag racing, the quarter mile is the most important metric. It's why Tesla provides the quarter mile time at the end of the drag race video for the Cybertruck. And yeah, it's misleading to show this immediately after watching an eighth mile race without informing the viewers. But it's not like Tesla is saying it can tow a Porsche 911 across the quarter mile faster than the Porsche 911 can go by itself. It can tow a Porsche 911 across the quarter mile faster than the Porsche 911 can go by itself. He is lying to us. Elon, what are you doing? And what do you got to say, say now, huh? Faster than a 911 while towing a 911. Okay, so... God damn it. So two statements that definitely seem like blatant lies back to back. We'll ignore the pedantic definition of the word faster. The Cybertruck has a top speed of 130 miles per hour. The Porsche 911's yes. top speed is 181 miles per hour. Much faster than 130 miles an hour. Per hour. There is no world where stock to stock, the Cybertruck is faster as in higher top speed. Yet they even show on the screen faster than a 911, oh. which again is objectively not true. Now, did I just say I wouldn't get pedantic and then suddenly get very pedantic? Yes, yes. you did. Yes, Bingo. I did. Do you see Run how money. annoying that? But what about the quarter mile statement? Now, perhaps an huh? obvious rhetorical question, but if the Cybertruck actually- That wasn't was me, right? Was that just a weird edit? It'd be great if this um, loaded get pedantic and then suddenly get very pedantic yes 
Yes, I did. Do you see how annoying that? But what about the quarter mile statement? It was it because it's annoying? An obvious rhetorical question. But if the Cybertruck actually was quicker in the quarter mile while towing, why would they end the race at the eighth mile in the video? Now, that's of course the easy way out. And this is Engineering Explained, where we use math to find definitive answers to questions that nobody really cares about. So let's determine which sure. vehicle would actually be quicker in the quarter mile. Now, before we is do it the math, we need to be absolutely certain that their cars are running an eighth mile and not the quarter mile. So very quickly, you can see there are bleachers when the vehicles cross the finish line. Then we get an overhead view, and you can see that that finish line is across from where the bleachers end, which marks the halfway point of the track. You can see the timing oh, boards shit. are uh, all the way in Thank you, my honey. No, I'm okay, thank you. Food. Now back to the video. In the back, where the quarter mile ends, and there are no bleachers at this point. Clearly, the finish line was at the eighth mile. But if that's not good enough, you can go on Google Maps for Sacramento Raceway Park and measure the distance from the starting line to the line across from the bleachers, which turns out to be 660 feet or an eighth mile. And if you measure to the timing boards, ah. you get 1,320 feet or a quarter mile. So we have positively confirmed the video shows them finishing the race at the eighth mile line. Okay, so ultimately what we're trying to figure out is, is a Cybertruck towing a Porsche 911 quicker in the quarter mile than a Porsche 911 doing it all by itself? So we have a lot of unknowns here, as you can see. So let's establish what we do know. Well, we do know that a okay, Tesla Cybertruck by itself I can guess, complete the quarter what mile do we, and 11 uh, seconds dead at 100 No, what do we know? What do you know? You tell me what you know. 15 miles per hour as verified by by Jason Camisa, who took one on the drag strip. Okay, so how quick is the 911 by itself? All right, so Car and Driver tested the current generation base Porsche 911, which did the quarter mile in 11.5 seconds at 120 ah. miles per hour. So, so you can see that's not things a about. very big gap, and it seems highly unlikely that a Tesla towing another vehicle would do better than 11.5. However, we don't know exactly which Porsche 911 Tesla was testing against. We do know that there is a slower Porsche 911 out there, the 911T. And the reason why it's slower is because it has a manual transmission offered. So both car and driver and Motor Trend have both tested the 2023 Porsche 911 Carrera T, and that vehicle has a quarter mile time of 12.2 seconds at 116 miles per hour. Again, slower because it's using a manual transmission rather than Porsche's very quick dual clutch transmission. Now, hopefully this okay. goes without saying, but I think it's important that we use third party test results to understand what is the slowest possible quarter mile time for a current generation Porsche 911 which according to Motor Trend and the current driver possible is 12.2 seconds. So that's the target to beat for the Tesla Cybertruck towing a 911. All right, so we've established our baseline and now we're trying to figure out how long does the Tesla towing the 911 take to complete the quarter mile? Now, we don't know this because they don't show the full clip of it completing a quarter mile. But can you However, do math? They do show a full uninterrupted clip of it completing the eighth mile. So we can get this information. So if we start the clock at the very first frame before the stage light goes out, which indicates when the drag strip timing begins, and okay. end the clock when the Cybertruck first touches the finish line, you get 8.25 seconds. This comes from counting frames or the number of images that make up the video. So in this in this case, we have 198 frames for it to complete the quarter mile at a frame rate of 24 frames per second, 198 divided by 24, that gives you 8.25 seconds. Now, if you do the same thing for the 911, the stage light actually goes out one frame later. However, it takes four more frames to cross the finish line. And so you have a total of 201 Ooh. frames at 24 okay. frames per second, giving you a time of 8.38. Okay, okay, so how yes. quickly cool. can the Cybertruck by itself run the eighth mile? Well, once again, thanks to Jason Camisa, we have this number. So the average of two runs running in opposite directions, the Cybertruck completes the eighth mile in 6.94 seconds 
at 99 okay. miles per hour. Okay, so okay. if the Cybertruck towing a 911 completes the eighth mile in 8.25 seconds, and a Cybertruck on its own completes that eighth mile in 6.94 seconds, well, that means we need an additional 1.31 seconds to complete that eighth mile while towing. What does that mean? Well, it means at an absolute oh, no. minimum, we have to add 1.31 seconds to our Cybertruck's quarter mile time of 11 seconds. In other words, 11 plus 1.31, that gives us 12.3 12 12 seconds, absolute best case against the 911, which can do it in 12.2 seconds. Boom, it cannot win. It cannot win in this race. Realistically, that's all you need to know. It cannot beat the slowest current gen 911 while towing a 911 in the quarter mile. But yeah, again, I'm not quite satisfied. To get a I'm more accurate the answer, butt. let's figure out how quickly the Cybertruck is going when it crosses the eighth mile mark. All right, so we're trying to figure out the Cybertruck's velocity. Velocity is equal to distance divided by time. In this case, for distance, we're going to use the entire vehicle with the Cybertruck towing the 911. And for time, we'll say, how long does it take this entire length of vehicle to cross Cross the finish line. So the Cybertruck itself is about 224 inches between right. the Cybertruck and the Porsche 911. Looks to be a little bit bigger than one wheel of the Cybertruck. The wheels of the Cybertruck about three feet. So let's call that gap four feet. Okay. And then we have the length of the 911, which is 178 inches about. So you add that all up, you've got 450 inches divided by 12. That gives you a distance of 37.5 feet. Okay, so how much feet time does so it take weird. the entire vehicle to cross the finish line? So if you start with the frame just before it touches the finish line, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven frames and you can see the back of the Porsche is just over the start of the finish line. So in seven frames or seven twenty-fourths of a second, we traveled the full length of the towing vehicle. All right, so 37.5 feet divided by seven twenty-fourths of a second gives us about 128.6 feet per second or about 88 miles per hour. So in the eighth mile, the Cybertruck oh, towing wow. the 911 does it at 8.25 at about 88 miles per hour. So now we can get a better estimate for the remaining time to complete that final eighth mile. Okay, so you can see there's an 11 mile per hour gap between the Cybertruck on its own and the Cybertruck towing a 911. So let's be generous and say that it can maintain this 11 mile per hour gap for the remainder of the quarter mile. So we're gonna be going from 88 miles per hour to the final speed of 119 minus 11, so that gives us 108. In other words, an average speed across that eighth mile of 98 miles per hour. If we okay. wanna figure out time, we just take distance divided by velocity, so we have point one. 125 one eighth of a mile divided by 98 miles per hour. Multiply that by 3600 seconds in an hour, and that gives us a total time for that remaining eighth mile of 4.5. Five nine seconds. So if we add 4.59 to 8.25, well, we get a realistic quarter mile time of around 12.84 seconds at about 108 miles per hour. Again, quite a gap not between good, that good. and a Porsche 911. So as you can see, it will be slower while towing a 911 in the quarter mile. All right, so a couple very important concluding remarks. To me, all Porsche 911s look pretty much the same. I don't know exactly which one Tesla used in the video. Elon describes it as follows. And I, sh I should say this is, this is an actual Porsche. It's, we literally just got it from the dealer. 2023 Porsche 911. If I had to guess, I would guess that it's the Carrera T because that's the slowest 911 and it's also the lightest 911. So that yeah. would give the towing Tesla as much of an advantage as possible. One indication to me is that you can see a very noticeable lurch when the Porsche seemingly changes gears. You can see the whole car heaves forward briefly, something you wouldn't expect to see if it was a dual clutch Porsche, because even during a gear shift, these dual clutch transmissions maintain positive torque meaning very little, if any, visual indication of lurching. The base 911 does not offer a manual, and it's quicker, which is what leads me to believe that it's the 911T. Okay, the second point, what the Cybertruck achieved here is still bonkers. The fact that it can put down a quarter mile in the high 12s or low 13s while towing a Porsche 911 is nuts and hilarious to watch. 
This is another case where the engineering of the vehicle alone was absolutely enough for the Cybertruck to deserve some hype. So why muddy this achievement with a marketing stunt that's difficult to interpret? Put plainly, how this was presented during the Cybertruck reveal was misleading. Now, maybe he simply misspoke, but if that's the case, it only seems fair to me to apologize to Porsche for misrepresenting the true gap in pace. There's definitely interesting engineering to talk about with this vehicle, so expect those videos in the future. And if for some reason you're upset that I'm singling out Tesla here, I have great news. You can check out my video on how the Ford Lightning can't realistically tow 1 million pounds, or how the SSC Tuatara didn't actually Hello everyone yeah, more and calm, welcome. Man. Perhaps you have seen the video of the electric Ford F-150 pulling 1.25 million pounds. And this was a brilliant marketing idea by Ford and it was a wonderfully executed stunt. So props to Ford for pulling it off. However, I think it might give you the dangerous idea that an electric Ford F-150 can actually 1.25 million pounds, which in this video I'm going to demonstrate why Who I would ever need to do cannot. that? Now, it was a real stunt, so the truck really did pull 1.25 million pounds. However, much like a well-executed magic trick, you know, you might see a magic trick and be like, wow, that was amazing. But then if the magician explains to you how they did it, <sighs> you're like, okay, well, it's not that cool. And I believe the same thing is kind of going on here with Ford and towing this 1.25 million pounds. So once I explain to you how it all works, you'll probably be like, okay, wow, it's not that cool. It was very cool and it was a very clever idea by Ford. So I'm glad they did it. Uh, but I want to explain the science behind it. So in this video, we're going to learn why this electric F-150 was capable of pulling 1.25 million pounds on a railway, but why I believe it is not capable of doing so on the road. Okay, so you're probably wondering, you know, what is the insanely high force that's going to be required in order to pull this 1.25 million pound load? And so our problem right here, we're trying to figure out what is the force required in order to move this load right here. And so we have an electric Ford F-150 for the purpose of, of this video. We're just going to assume that it has four wheel drive, that all the wheels are driven. It could probably do it even with two wheel drive, but we're just going to make that assumption. We have a toe strap. I'll do that. No. Going back go. to the load, which is 1.25 million pounds. We'll get more into the toe strap later on in the video. So this is our problem here, and we're trying to figure out what is the force required in order to move that mass. So our equation to figure out this force, force equals the coefficient of rolling resistance multiplied by the normal force. So we have this blue load right here. It's a circle, it's a wheel. We're trying to pull it along yes. with a certain force, you that are. force being F there. Now there's resistance the from the ground to moving ha. this load. So there's a ground reaction force pushing against us when we're trying to pull that thing over. So this is what is represented by our coefficient of rolling resistance. And so the coefficient of rolling resistance is the ratio of the force required to pull a certain amount of weight. So for example, what does that mean? If you had a coefficient of rolling resistance of 0.1, it would take one pound to pull a 10 pound mass because your ratio is 0.1. So one pound to 10 pounds. Well, I thought that was 101B. I was like, what's 101B? That's what the coefficient of rolling resistance is. And so that plays the critical role here in how can we get this load moving. Now, the coefficient of rolling resistance changes depending on what you're using as your wheel and what you have as your ground. So the less wheel deformation and the less ground deformation you have, the lower your coefficient of rolling resistance is, meaning the less force you need in order to pull a certain load. So for example, yes. we're going to use a, say that we need to pull 10,000 pound load. So we've got yes. a regular pneumatic tire on sand that has a coefficient of rolling resistance of, of about 0.3 
meaning in order to pull 10,000 pounds, we need a 3,000 pound force to move that right. wheel along. If we were to put a tire on the road, that dramatically reduces that coefficient of rolling resistance, and suddenly we can pull a 10,000 pound force with just huh. 150 pounds of force. So you're starting to see where this is going. If you were to have a steel railroad wheel on pavement, uh, then that's a terrible idea because you're going to destroy the road. So you don't want to do that. I don't know what the numbers are for it, which is why you see steel railroad wheels on steel railroad that rails. And so this steel then. on steel okay. interaction is great uh, because both the steel wheel and the steel rail and you only have need very a little deformation. And as a result, they have a very low so it could coefficient only of rolling resistance. About it could only actually pull 125,000 pounds? 0 0.0015. Is that right? Meaning to pull a 10,000 pound weight, all you need is 15 pounds of force to do it. All right, let's do some math. So now that we know what all of our variables math. are, we can calculate what this force is in order to be able to pull this 1.25 million pound load. And so force is equal to the coefficient of rolling resistance. We're using 0 0.0015. It could actually be less than this, uh, but we're gonna be conservative here with our estimates and say it's 0 0.0015. Well, it's like oil or something. And we need to pull a 1.25 million pound load. So we multiply that across and the force required in order to pull 1.25 million pounds is 1,875 pounds of force. So not all that insanely high of a number, no uh, but we don't yet know is this F-150 capable of actually pulling that? So what is the maximum force that this electric F-150 can pull? Now, based on traction alone, we're going to look at this equation right here. The force, the maximum force that this truck can move forward Why with is it will be a smiley equal to the on there? frictional coefficient of the tires multiplied by the normal force. And so we're going to assume it has enough power. I have no doubt that it does. Uh, and you can always use gears if needed to have more torque at the ground. So no problems there. So the force is going to be equal to, let's say our frictional coefficient is 1.0, nice conservative estimate. And then our uh, normal force here, let's say the truck weighs 5,000 pounds. Now it may weigh a little bit more, it may weigh a little bit less. We don't know how much it weighs, but that's in line with a current uh, Super Crew Cab F-150. So this okay. means the maximum force that this F-150, assuming it has right? four-wheel drive, heavy. can move forward uh, and pull is 5,000 pounds. Oh, easy and so stuff. obviously 5,000 pounds is greater than 1,875 pound force. And so as a result, this thing is capable of pulling a 1.25 million pound load. How cool is that? Now, if you're not sad already, uh, you know, from being disappointed that it only took 1,875 pound force in order to move this thing, uh, you're about to get more sad. So here we go. Let's take that train. We're gonna take it off those railroad tracks. We're gonna put it on pneumatic tires, so road car tires, and we're gonna stick it on a real road. That is 18,000 so pound now, force. So now, instead of this 0 0.0015, our coefficient of rolling resistance is 0 0.015. So the force required in order to pull it is multiplied by 10. So now we need an 18,750 pound force in order to move this, this 1.25 million pounds on the road. And unfortunately, our maximum here is basically just going to be the weight of the truck itself. So if you load it up with a ton of stuff, you might be able to do it, but as is, this F-150 is very far away from this 18,750 number. So it would not even be able to budge that train if it was okay. sitting on a road on Unlucky road tires. Also. Now, realistically, as tire pressures go up, which you would need to do if you had a crazy high load like 1.25 million pounds, then the frictional coefficient or the rolling resistance coefficient is going to decrease. And so as a result of that decreasing coefficient of rolling resistance, this number will be less. But even if you were to chop that in by a third, uh, then you would be at six to 50 That's why you chopped so it by a third, huh? Rolling resistance, huh? A point zero zero five For your instead agenda? Of point zero uh, one so five, one third be of that, unable you to? still don't have enough force in order to do it. You could throw some sandbags in the back, hopefully you've got enough torque, uh, you know, put a thousand pound payload in there, and you might be able to make it work. Uh, but the unfortunate news here is if you were to do this, realistically, this number right here uh, means you could not pull that 1.25 million pounds on a road. Now here's what I think is the most mind-blowing thing Cheaters. about all of this. In the video, Ford states that they are traveling at 4.5 miles per hour. So that got me wondering, 
how much power is actually needed in order to travel at 4.5 miles per hour with a 1.25 million lot pound load. By the set, load. By the and so things, thankfully the equation those. is pretty simple. To find out power, we simply multiply force by velocity. We've already calculated our force and our velocity is 4.5 miles per okay. hour. So if we do that math, multiply the force by the velocity, we get 16.8 kilowatts or 22.5 horsepower. 22.5 <laughs> horsepower. That is all that is needed to maintain a speed of 4.5 miles per hour. Now, to get up to that speed oh, is going to take God. more power. It takes a lot of power to accelerate. Uh, but in order to maintain that speed of 4.5 miles right. per hour, all that Ford F-150 has to put down is 22.5 horsepower to keep that thing moving. That is pretty cool. So now my question is, was it necessary for the F-150 to be electric? And certainly it helps that it's electric because electric motors at zero RPM, when that truck isn't even moving, it's going to have all of its torque available and be able to start accelerating that giant mass uh, you know, at a reasonable rate. That's very cool. Uh, but I think the danger here from a marketing standpoint is that instead of this being a comparison saying, hey, look what our truck can do, your truck can't do. You're just showing what the electric truck can uh, do, instead right? Instead it's an illusion. It's pushing Saying, hey, check out what our truck can do. Yours could also do it. Uh, so that's the sad news Yours here. Could this also this do is it. not something unique to this electric F-150. I think plenty of vehicles out there, whether they're gas, diesel, whatever, tons of vehicles out there could have done this experiment because it was done on a railroad track with steel I want to know about the tow strap rail, though. And that enables you to have this really low force that you're able to pull uh, that mass with. So it's a very neat stunt, uh, but once you kind of understand it, it's like womp, womp, womp. Everybody could probably do this. Now, I want womp. to talk about the tow strap for womp, a moment womp. because the top comments on this video as I was looking at them uh, they were all saying wow this is an amazing toe strap what in the world how does a toe strap uh, it capable of pulling such a crazy high load well as we have demonstrated uh, within this video, only needs to be able to withstand 2,000 to pounds this thing is 1,875 I don't need to withstand so that. You need a 2,000 pound tow strap in order to make it work out. There's nothing fancy about the tow strap. Uh, pretty much any tow strap out there will probably be able to do it as long as it's rated for at least 2,000 pounds. Now, there's a bunch of other variables out there that are important. Hold uh, on. Unfortunately, they're just. Hold on. Tow strap. Ugh. How much? What's, what's this rated for? 29 bucks. Specs. Uh, doesn't want to tell me. Uh, four thousand, four thousand kgs, twenty nine dollars. That that could that could pull it. Man, I don't know if I could feel if I feel like playing today. Oh, honestly, I was going to end the stream after this video because I'm tired. It's, it's, it's hot and it's been a long day. Yeah, sorry about that. And tomorrow I'm playing Call of Duty campaign. And then Friday I'm playing Fallout 4. So... Doesn't look good for for playing COD until Saturday, <laughs> but then you're not even uh, streaming on Saturdays or at home on Saturdays. So like, so you could pull this. It's boring. So you know, in this video, I focused on the very exciting one, which is that coefficient of rolling resistance, the twenty dollars which strap. makes this stunt possible. Uh, but there's all kinds of other reasons why you know an electric. You'll be home would... this Saturday. Okay. Well, if you want to play on Saturday, we can play on Saturday. 50 is not going to pull 1.25 million pounds. First of all, if you go on any. Oh, have they gone? Oh, sorry. Thank you for letting me know that they left, though. Because they're yours? They're your auntie and then? Yeah, nah, fair enough, fair enough. If you don't want to deal with them, don't deal with them.
any sort of incline, so once you're on an incline, <laughs> that train is going backwards. That truck is just being dragged along with it. Uh, second of all, you need to have braking, and this thing is not going to have the brakes to stop 1.25 million pound mass. In fact, it was using a tow strap, uh, it wasn't directly connected. If it were to try to slow down, obviously they're having to use the brakes on this uh, rather than the truck itself. The truck itself is not going to be capable of slowing down that insanely high mass. Also, you're going to need a ton of power in order to be able to accelerate. Uh, you need an insane amount of cooling if you're going to be making all that power. You know, you can get the thing moving, it's just going to take forever to do it. A low force will work, it just means you're going to accelerate slowly. And then, of course, the parts durability of everything involved in order to pull a mass that high. Uh, it's going to be uh, quite insane. Yeah, you do your thing. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna end my stream. Oh my god, fuck off. V1K1 on 2003 just redeemed posture check. Yeah, I'll do that after I end the stream. <laughs> oh Redemption! my god. V1 K1 Ong Let's raid a channel. Hydrate. With that channel being V1 K1 Ong. He's not even live and he wants me to raid him when I'm done. What the heck? Now I gotta pull up his fucking. Oh, he is live. Now I gotta pull up his the fucking. Oh, he is live. Press what fucking button? I'm pressing. I'm pressing raid channel. And I'm putting in V1K1 mm, and you're not coming up. How do I... How do... How do I... How do I do this? Oh, you got your chat up there now too, huh? Huh? Thanks for the lurk, babe. Appreciate it. Why do you have- what made you put your chat up there, huh? Um, just sent the thing to the Discord. Motherfucker. V1, K1. It doesn't- no, it just- it just doesn't want me to rate him. Slash. Raid V one K one two thousand three. It's because of his raid settings. Raid Little settings. Bit. I have it at minimum two. Um, I mean, I might as well not raid, right? I'm already in one. his fucking oh, yeah. thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no, I you mean, are at one. Not raid, right? I'm already in his fucking oh, yeah. thing. <laughs> you oh, yeah. oh, no, yeah. yeah, you should. You, I guess you just stay and watch. Yeah. Um. So what made you put the chat here on your screen, huh? All right. Anyway. Why'd you do that? Sort the shit on the phone. Oh my god. Of course. For the end of his stream. There you go, that that's now on his on his Yep, screen. and we're ending that.